One use of pivot tables is to provide evidence of relationships in the so-called classification problem. This problem arises when one field lists categories such as yes and no for whether a customer has tried your product, and other fields such as age or gender might provide information on which people have tried your product. In fact, the classification problem is one of the most important problems in the general field of data mining and a number of sophisticated algorithms and software packages have been developed to shed light on it. However, simple pivot tables are a good place to start. The data set you see here on whether potential customers have tried a new frozen lasagna product was used in the introductory video, What Pivot Tables Do For You. However, the operations went by pretty quickly in that video, so the current video explains them in more detail. The goal is to see how the various fields in columns B to J might relate to the have tried behavior in column K. I have already created two blank pivot tables, a blank pivot chart that corresponds to the pivot table on the left, and a text box for notes. For classification, it is useful to place have tried in the columns area and to place any field in the values area so long as it is summarized by count. I will do this for the pivot table on the left. I will show each count as a percentage of the row total. As you can see, almost 58% of the people in this data set have tried the lasagna. Now I will drag potential explanatory fields to the rows area, one at a time, grouping if necessary, and take a close look at the percentages in the table or the bars in the chart. I will start with the live alone field, which is yes for people who live alone and no for others. The result is the type of information that's useful to the company. A much higher percentage of people who live alone have tried the product than those who don't live alone. As I discover this information, I can keep notes in the text box for later use. Sometimes the percentages in the pivot table can be misleading because they are based on very small numbers. Therefore, it is useful to have a second pivot table that shows raw counts. This is the reason for the pivot table on the right. I'll set it up now. Next, I will try mall trips. The results indicate another fairly strong relationship where people who make more trips to the mall are more likely to have tried the product. However, note from the raw counts on the right that the last two 100% values are each based on a single person only. Next I will try age. It has way too many distinct values so I will group on it. This is one more fairly strong relationship, with young people more likely to have tried the product. Next, I will try income, another candidate for grouping. There is a much weaker relationship here, and the last three 100% values correspond to only a few people. By now you get the idea. With just a little work, it is possible to see which fields are related, to various degrees, to the key have tried field, and which are practically unrelated.